What is going on, YouTube people? New Cards Comics here for the weekly sports card market update. Ohio State, Oregon, late second quarter slash halftime edition. Trying to squeeze this one in as I have had a pretty busy day today. We had local show today. Hartville show was this morning, followed up by the Indians game. I did not attend, but had to lock in on TV and watch that one. Uh, and that basically led right into after dinner this Ohio State Oregon game. And then I get to watch my pitiful Browns later today. Before we dive too deep, the content for this week might be a little off random, especially the back half of the week, as this is New York Comic Con week. Uh, I will be heading out to New York later this week. Plan on doing some vlog style content, kind of like I did at Fanatics Fest International this year. So if you're kind of curious to see what a Comic Con looks like, uh, I will be your man on the scene, giving you some footage from the show floor. Not sure exactly how I'm going to handle it content wise for the week, uh, but I will also let you know weekly sports card market update will either be abridged or a day late next week uh, because I will probably be either traveling back or still in New York City, and this is not an easy video to do while traveling. So there might not be one next week, but there may be some other sort of content coming out of New York Comic Con, so the back half of the week will probably be pretty Comic Con heavy. So just wanted to let you all know about that. If you're attending New York Comic Con, keep your eyes peeled for me. I'll be roaming around. I have a four-day pass. Uh, I plan on going in some shape or form pretty much every single day. So... Hope to see you out there in New York. And of course, of course, I'm not lucky enough. The Indians are playing in Cleveland while I'm in New York. Because I thought, oh my God, we play the Yankees. Maybe I could go see the Indians play in Yankee Stadium in the playoffs. But that is not to be the case. Unless it goes to game six, which is Monday night, next Monday night. Maybe I could squeeze that in. I'd have to stay an extra day and figure some stuff out with work. Uh, but there's at least a pot potential for that to happen. So, without further ado, this video is powered by our good friends over at ComC.com. They have an NBA auction event running towards the end of the month. So if you have stuff you want to get in for that, or maybe you're a potential buyer on that, make sure you are signing up for a ComC account, your home for buying and selling all sorts of trading cards. I actually just bought a couple cards this week. Sent one off the grading to CGC. So we'll see how that looks when it comes back. We'll be a video on that sometime in the future when that comes back from grading. Uh, they are also set up, uh, as you're watching this, this is the last day uh, at the Nashville show this weekend. Uh, if you have cards you want to drop off in person. Speaking of which, let's lead into kind of the opening discussion here nashville shows going on this weekend i haven't heard anything about it i did not have time today to reach out to my various folks that are set up down there that i know i know a handful of dealers that are set up down there that is a show that i would definitely like to get to at some point in time it just always seems to be on a very inconvenient weekend i can say personally my local show today at hartville definitely felt a lot slower than normal now i don't think that that has a lot to do with the current state of the show scene. I think it had more to do with locally. Uh, we had the Indians playing at one o'clock today and Ohio state playing at seven 30. So if you had any, if you had anything you had to get done today as a family, you were probably doing it first thing this morning, which is when I was at the show because you wanted to get it done before all the sporting events started. So if you had to appease the family and go to a pumpkin patch somewhere or go drink some apple cider or whatever the case might be for your fall activities, you were probably cranking that all out first thing this morning before everything kicked off. Uh, if you attended the Nashville show or if you were set up, feel free to fire away in the comments down below and give a little status report on what things were like from the scene. We got a slew of new release news to talk about this week, but before we do... Just checking in real quick. Let me refresh the page in case something has changed. Nope. Logo Fractor still in stock. Still sitting in stock uh, a full week after release. 
Uh, a couple of my boxes actually get delivered before I leave, so I will probably rip a couple of those for a video. Speaking of Tops releases, if I remember, I will link to this. At some point in time, I'll probably link to this on the community page. Tops Update is up for product drop on the old Fanatics website. It'll probably also be going up on Tops' website early this week. That releases on Wednesday. I was hoping to rip some boxes of this for the channel, but then I realized that it comes out while I am on my way to New York. So if I do, it won't be till the week after. I think it would be kind of fun to chase some skein stuff, nothing too crazy. And I mean, listen, I know that they just sold an 8K Wemby box uh, and a lot of the other stuff is pretty pricey. We're talking about a hundred bucks for logo fractor boxes. Uh, $89 for a hobby box of update and 200 bucks for a jumbo box in 2024. I, I might catch some heat for this, but I actually think that probably seems fairly reasonable, uh, given everything that's going on with the current state of wax and given the checklist that's in there, uh, you know, Skeens is the big chase. Jared Jones is in there, I think with his first true rookie card. And then, you know, you're going to get all the other guys in there with their second rookies and some of them, they're true rookies because some of them were SP'd in series two. So the checklist is pretty good. Uh, the gold mirrors seem to be more rare based off of what the spitballing guys were talking about the other day. I am probably going to rip at least a box or two of this, uh, at least one jumbo for sure. And then the other thing that snuck out this week was, oh, here's what the skeins looks like. They did share a preview image of it. We do not know what the SP looks like yet. Um, would they try to sneak Livy in to this set uh, with the two of them together on the gold mirror variation. That card would sell for a small fortune if they could pull that off. The other thing that they're already teasing, because you already got to think a couple products ahead, Topps Chrome Update. Uh, Jackson Holiday is the cover boy for Topps Chrome Update. And they confirmed that debut patches will be part of this release as well. This will be a massive chase. Uh, the debut patches are going to be a huge chase. If I assume Skeens is going to be in there, plus with as loaded as this rookie class is, that those guys are going to have debut patches in this product. This is going to be a very popular product. I'm sure it'll be printed to the moon and back again, but the chase, get ready for the bounties. I'm sure there's going to be all sorts of wildness that comes out uh, to pump this thing to the moon with Tops Update. That's the only reason why I'm thinking about pumping the brakes a little bit on regular Tops Update is to potentially save some cash to chase some stuff in Chrome Update. We will see what pricing looks like on that. I'm sure it'll be much more expensive. But like I said, regular update, this actually seems pretty okay-ish given the current state of the world. Remember that SGC 10 Wilt Chamberlain? Looked beautiful in the SGC slab. Nice vintage card and a nice vintage slab in the tux. It got crossed to PSA. It is now a PSA 10. That's right. They submitted it. It crossed over and it is now in the PSA 10 slab. This actually popped up on, I think, Saturday, Friday, late Friday, early Saturday. This came across the, uh, the old Twitter machine. So that will is now in a PSA label. And actually... This is one, listen, you know, I don't, I'm not a big fan of SGC for ultra modern stuff. For vintage, I think their stuff looks really good, but I actually think this looks better in the PSA slab. The red and white of the card play really nicely off the red and white of the label. I actually think this card looks really, really clean in that slab. Shout out to whoever had the guts to cry. Well, they probably sent it in for a crossover in the slab. It's not like they cracked it out, uh, but I'm sure... That had to be a hefty grading fee on this bad boy. Sheesh. PSA printed a mint on that one. Speaking of Topps Mercury, the hyped, pumped, whatever you want to call it, pump and dump to the moon influencer fest product of the week. Topps Curl Mercury boxes are flying off the shelf. 8k a box they are flipping on the secondary market for about 9500 to 10k honestly not much of a markup uh if you sit and run the numbers on all that 
you're really not making much in the way of profit, if any. You're really just kind of breaking even on the thing. Um, I'm not going to go too deep. In fact, I'm not going to look at all single sales yet. I kind of want to give it a couple days. That'll be a video for next week just to kind of see how singles are performing. There is a decent amount of sales on there. I just want another day or two of data to see if we can really get a grasp on how things are doing from this product. For the most part, the base autos with no patch seem to be doing the worst uh, by a large margin. Some of the patches are doing okay. Some are doing really well. It just kind of depends on the patch and if it's, you know, what game it's from and all that jazz. So we'll look at some single prices here in a couple of days. But the secondary market for boxes is really no markup at all. If you bought this thing hoping to flip it, you're probably not looking too hot. Uh, the Jordan 101 has been hit. The, the Jordan logo uh, RPA has been hit. And I think one of the other one of ones has been hit. But I think there's still a couple floating out there. I think one LeBron Victor has been hit, but still some of those are floating out there. So still a lot of big hits in the product to be found. I just, the RPA cards look okay. The non-patch cards aren't really doing it for me from this set. They're just kind of whatevs. And we'll look at, um, one of the things I wanted to do this week was check in on the Bowman pricing uh, on the 2022 Bowman Victor to see how if that's been impacted at all between Topps Chrome, Autos coming out, and now these coming out. And it might be a little too soon to say, but we'll look at that here in a few minutes. But overall, Mercury is seems like a fine product. It's doing okay-ish. We'll see what happens once supply gets burned through. But the biggest problem is, is the amount of supply hitting the secondary market all at once of Victor Autos. And I don't think, you know, there's this narrative that like Victor Autos are printed to the moon and back again. I don't really think that's the case. I just think it's more of a case of a bunch getting dumped on the market all at the same time. Um, I don't think he's going to have any more autos than any other normal rookie would. In fact, I still think he's going to have less because he's just in less product. But there's just a ton of them being dumped on the market all at once because this product's getting ripped left and right. The other release of the week was Topps Chrome Cosmic. I have not watched any box openings of this at all. Not really a product I've ever really been interested in very much. I didn't even try to get a box of this on release day. They were going for $2.99. They are currently on the secondary market for anywhere between $3.50 and $400, uh, with a little bit in between. There's some cool cards that come out of this, but it's just, I don't know, $300 a box, no guaranteed auto. I passed, uh, and like I said, I really haven't even been that interested in watching box openings of it. But that also came out this week and is also going for a small premium on the secondary market. This is a fun one. Last one before we transition into charts and graphs territory. Select WNBA first off the line is coming with a Dutch auction. Kicking things off at three grand a box. First ever select. The floor goes to 750. Uh, this comes up in about five days from the time of recording. We will see what this sells out at. Uh, there are some pretty nice looking... The, the one card that I was like, you know what? If I was going to chase a high-end card from this, it would be this one, I think. I really like Color Blast. I don't own a single Color Blast, but I've always really liked Color Blast. And I really like the black Color Blast. I actually think this card design looks pretty nice. Maybe I'm in the minority on that. Uh, they do have some other preview images here of what some of the other stuff looks like. Uh, we got some dual autos there. That's actually a pretty nice photo on the dual Lloyd. But yeah, I actually kind of like the dark Color Blast a little bit. I'm sure these will sell for a small fortune. Uh, and this leads us into, let's dive into some market mover stuff here. Link in the description down below. If you want to check out Market Movers, there's a coupon code down there, and you can also get a 14-day free trial if you want to play around with charts and graphs and run whatever you want on your own. I was curious what how Caitlin Clark's stuff has been doing now that the WNBA season ended, and obviously, you know, she didn't get very far in the playoffs. 
still performing quite well. A little bit of a tail off as we enter into her off season. Uh, but this is looking back at a decent chunks worth of data. I have her base 2022 Bowman first in a PSA 10. That card's going for about 200 bucks. That's the dark blue line down here. You can basically see since Christmas, it's slowly built and built and built and is just slowly starting to tail off now. It peaked out at about 275, 250 bucks during peak Caitlin Clark hype in the middle of summer uh, around the national. And it has tailed off a little bit down the 180. And now we're also starting to get WNBA product hit as well. That could be undercutting it a little bit. But overall, that card's performed pretty well. Just a, a normal kind of drop off postseason like you would see. Uh, the light blue is the PSA 10 Bowman's best auto from 2022. So air quote, you know, first year auto, but not a Bowman first. That has obviously performed pretty well. That has gone way, way up since it initially hit the market. And then uh, the yellow line is her PSA 9 first Bowman prospect. Another one that has done extremely well. These cards are actually pretty hard to track down. The PSA 9 pop is only 58. And PSA 10s are ghosts of this card. Uh, the printing quality on this set was not good at all. At least on the Caitlin Clark. Uh, and they just, it is near impossible to find a PSA 10 on that card. But the 9s are performing quite well at 1.2K. I still wonder, you know, with her specifically... Does the college thing matter that much? Or is she just going to be so associated with that Iowa, all those final four runs and the scoring title and all that stuff that the college jersey doesn't hurt that card that much? We're going to, this will be a telling year as she starts to get more WNBA licensed stuff from Panini. I am sure they're going to milk the hell, hell out of her um, for everything that they could possibly get. In other female basketball player news, uh, Paige Buchers has done really, 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 really well over the offseason. This is from the beginning of June through today. This is her PSA 10 refractor from 2023 Bowman. And she's kind of like the face of college basketball this upcoming season. That's going for about 100 bucks, And her PSA 9 auto is up to 375 Once again, PSA 10 is very hard to get in that card. But that's up 96% uh, as her stuff continues to climb as we head into the women's college basketball season. So her stuff's doing quite well as well. Earlier in the offseason, I actually was trying to buy some of her stuff, and I kept getting outbid on it. Uh, and I guess I just was not aggressive enough. Looking at Victor. This is the card I mentioned earlier. I'm just kind of curious to see how this performs now that it has some true competition. It hasn't dropped much at all. There was a couple sales here, but for the most part, it's been sitting around a 4K card, give or take 10 or 15% for pretty much the entire year. Uh, but now it has some real competition to it in the Topps Chrome and now all this Mercury stuff. So I'm curious to see if this card can sustain. If he's in his Metropolitan's jersey, that's technically licensed. It has the first logo on it. Myself, personally, if I was chasing a Victor Auto and I wanted an air quote rookie or rookie adjacent, so like a first or this unlicensed nonsense, it would be between this and one of the RPAs with a debut jersey patch. I think that would be one of the two that I would go for depending on price point. Now, obviously, this and like a PSA 9, you're going to be able to get way cheaper. But between this and the RPA, specifically with the debut jersey patch, I think are the two paths that I'd want to go down. I would much rather have this card than any base auto out of Mercury and any base auto out of Tops, whether it's Chrome or Sapphire. I would much rather own this card. So that's just my take on it. I could be right. I could be wrong. Curious for your thoughts and comments. You could pop off down below. Let's look at a little baseball. Now, Tatis has been eliminated. And shout out to my Indians today, man. Lane Thomas to the freaking moon. I gave my wife a heart attack when he hit that grand slam. Um, Fernando Tatis had a really good NLDS. Uh, and his prices actually crept up 
for the playoff run now. Got eliminated, obviously, but he had a very hot series, was crushing the baseball. His first Bowman PSA 10 refractor is up about 20% over the last month or two, and his base Bowman PSA 10 auto is up 35% over the last month and a half, two months as well. So maybe he's setting himself up for a potential big year next year. Obviously, the dude can't stay healthy, and he's obviously had some, shall we call it, off-the-field problems with a little bit of Kurt's card care, juice and things. Um, so we'll see how his prices maintain over the offseason now that he's been eliminated, but it was just interesting to see his prices bump up off of his recent performance in the playoffs. Another guy that is increasing that has seen some pretty big bumps, and we'll see what happens in the next series is Francisco Lindor. We talked about him a couple of weeks ago. Uh, his PSA 10, you could see that shoot up on that. There has not been a sale since late September in a PSA 10. This is his first Bowman. There is actually one running at auction right now in a PSA 10. It was at like 400 bucks with a lot of time left on it. So we'll see where that one finishes up. But the PSA 9 has also been moving up as well. These are both over the last 60 days. The PSA 10 is up 120% and the PSA 9 is up 80%. So those cards are climbing very quickly as he is having a very, very good postseason as well. We'll see how everything finishes up here in the ALCS and the NLCS. On the NLCS side, obviously, you're going to have the Otani factor. Can he make a World Series or not? Uh, Lindor on the other side, Pete Alonzo, we have Mookie Betts. It's a star-powered NLCS. The ALCS, Garrett Cole's been starting to rebound a little bit. Obviously, Judge, Soto, um, you know, can Jason Dominguez get anything going? You know, does Jazz have any exciting moments in him? And then on the Cleveland side, uh, it's, you know, from a star perspective, it's the most underrated star in baseball. Am I biased? Maybe, but I think it's an accurate statement. Jose Ramirez, uh, you know, can he get going? The Tigers pitched around him a ton. Um, Scooball today wanted no part of him. Uh, and Quan had a really good uh, ALDS. Can he keep that going, uh, going into the ALCS? So we'll see what happens, but the NL definitely has the star power with the Otani side, though the Yankees have a lot of star power too. Um, my lowly Indians as the... Low man on the totem pole when it comes to salary. You have three mega powerhouses when it comes to salary. And then we are the small market darlings uh, crashing the party. So excited to see that kick off on Monday night. Let's finish up with a little football. Jaden Daniels to the freaking moon. Now, he did not have any Bowman cards. So the only thing we have really for him, and it is showing... Uh, are these tops now cards and the craziest one i was shocked when i looked at this I, I guess not shocked there's been crazier things in cards but this uh draft day second pick dual threat quarterback selected with the number two overall pick in a psa 10 is currently going for 225 dollars i had no idea this card had gotten that expensive the print run on this, you can see it right here. Market Movers tells us 7,300. The PSA 10 pop at present is about 1,000. Uh, this was all off season was a $40 card. And then look at this thing from even in September 17th, 30 bucks. And then it has just literally gone to the moon. Listen to me right now. If you own this card, sell this thing as fast as humanly possible possible please take your profits and run you will be able to buy this card back cheaper remember the channel motto they let you buy them back this is a prime example of that if you have this card do not hesitate take the 200 dollars and run this is another one if you were into this if you bought this if you bought a pack of these and you sent them in and got it graded and you paid 20 bucks to get it graded, whatever. You're into the card for 25 or $30. This is one of those don't get cute cards. If you put this thing up for 225 and someone offers you 200 and you're like, nah, nah. Last one did 225, bro. 
Uh, do 220, I'll cut you a deal, and you don't accept, that's probably going to bite you. One, there's probably more of these coming to market. Anyone that has one of these is laying around is probably getting ready to send it in the PSA. And you're about to get competition from real cards very quickly. So don't mess around with this. Just take your money and run. You, I, I would almost lock it in that you'll be able to buy this card back cheaper at some point in the near, before the end of the season, you'll be able to buy this card back cheaper. Even if he continues to play extremely well, you're just going to start getting competitions from real cards. And we're already seeing it. Uh, we have the one of him in the airbrushed NFL uniform with a photo not from that actual game. Uh, this was the print run from his debut game. And it, in a PSA 10, is already doing 140 bucks. This thing shot straight up uh, almost immediately. Print run on this was 14000 uh, PSA pop, uh, I'm not 100% sure yet. Mark Movers doesn't have it yet. They haven't run their update since this card started hitting. But this will obviously get pretty high in the population report. Once again, could perform pretty well here in the short term, but I'm not banking on either one of these cards long term. Just not. You're going to start getting competition from Panini releases, licensed product, etc. Don't get cute with this stuff, boys and girls. Not worth messing around. The card is not rare. It's a top style base card. On the flip side, preview for probably an upcoming video this week. Your quarterbacks, specifically your 2023 class, not looking too hot. Anthony Richardson down 60%. This is going from August 1st. So since the national PSA 10 silver, Anthony Richardson down 60%. Bryce Young down 68%. Will Levis down 73%. And I'm sure C.J. Stroud must be going to the moon. They're four and one. Uh, he is a, on the short list for an MVP candidate. He has to be going to the moon, right? Wrong. Down 40%. Stroud Silver Prism currently sitting at 600 bucks. That was an eight or 900. I sold mine for $900 at the National. I'm sorry, 850-ish. Somewhere in that range. Eight, 900 bucks at the National. Down 40%. Expectations have met reality. And nine times out of ten, reality always wins. Everyone's already forgotten about CJ Stroud. And they now have their eyes on Jaden Daniels. It's the way this game works, folks. That's why anyone that has anything baked into them, just move off it in the summer, wait a few months, and you could probably buy back into it. All I got for you boys and girls, as always, curious for your thoughts and comments down below. If you're heading to New York Comic Con, maybe I'll see you later this week. Catch boys and girls on the next one. Peace.